Now, y'all, at the beginning of the year, I said I was going to do reaction videos. Forget what kind of video this is. <laughs> Welcome back. Before we get started, today's going to be a good day. Keep you guys staying positive, loving yourself, and doing much happy. Now, we are back. We're, we're starting off with, with something different. This is a, a channel called Jumbly, and they ask like a lot of, they do like a lot of like uncomfortable kind of videos, videos, stuff like that. Just, you know, different people, different opinions on certain situations. And I seen this one video and it, um, this video is called Black People Anonymous Me Answer Seven Burning Questions. And I, I found that very, to be very interesting. Like, I was like, you know, this video was, the video title was very intriguing to me. So I'm trying to, I want to react to the video to see, you know, what questions are they going to ask and stuff like that. Me, me be considered in this system a black person or whatever but not gonna waste no time let's let's start the video up in an age of call-outs culture wars and perfect facades people can be afraid to express how they really feel and that's true so we brought together seven strangers protected their identities and asked them all seven burning audience questions <laughs> What will be revealed when we take the mask off? If your answer is yes, you'll turn your light on. The police. Oh, look. I know that there are quote unquote good cops, but if you are working in an entire force with individuals who are essentially mostly racist and where police come from um the history of it with being the sheriffs of slaves and tracking down slaves using dogs or whatever they're using it's just wearing that badge is just you're never really here for us and we never feel safe for that reason so f them. <laughs> the only reason why i can't fully say that like you just said there are some good out there from personally having a cousin who is a police officer but everything else behind that and all of the other people who introduced who bring the racist it. I feel like when it comes to talking about police and this kind of subject, especially on like the the masses of like social media, they only put like bad stuff about what, you know, cops do. And it's it's never really, you know, good videos when uh a cop was doing something good. And when it comes to racism, I don't think that there are there's a such thing as racist people. I think there are ignorant people. And I reason, the reason I say this is because, you know, racism is not something you're born with, but it's something that is taught to when you're uh, younger at a younger age. So, I mean, it really just depends on the situation, but let's keep going. Pretty much <coughs> yeah, no, them for sure. All right, we're going to have everyone join the conversation. I don't really feel anything towards this statement because I haven't had any encounters with police, like, ever. Why do you have to have a personal experience? Why can't you just look at the damage that has been done? It's like different because I, I... And then saying this, so it's, it's it, you know, it's videos you see, it's always police doing something to, to, to black people. But one question I always have in every situation, what made that police do what they did? Like it seemed like when when something happened and takes place, it, it's, it's it's never a question asked what led to them doing it. Cause I mean I I've seen videos of police not just doing it to black people, but doing it to to Mexicans and Chinese people and even other white people. So that that's always a question to to have in mind when it comes to you know police brutality or whatever. Feel I feel like I feel the weight of my ancestors in certain situations and other areas of my life than I do with the police. Okay, this is not me taking away from the black community in general because police are always targeting <laughs> us, but I find it interesting I doubt, uh, the black man depends. had agreed with that. Um, yeah. I, I'm like on the fence with it because I know that there are black cops <laughs> out there that are truly trying to protect and serve, and I really don't know what I would do if we completely destroyed the police system. I would be scared. See, personally, I haven't, I've never experienced police brutality against me or, or against like a family member or friend or anything or anything like that. But I feel like, you know, being, I'm speaking for a police officer, being a police officer, you never know what, what people intentions are when you pull them over and stuff like that. But 
the real question is when you are encountering that police officer are you having a you know are you being polite to him are you being respectful to him or are you as soon as you walk up you pull your phone out what do you stop me for you know just going over the top i feel like that that will really leads the police doing what they're doing especially if they're at, especially if they're at an ignorant police officer because it's like okay well <coughs> i don't believe that is the the solution but yes black men have that main encounter with the police and sometimes it's annoying because it's like okay is this the only cause that y'all care about is police brutality but um yeah i just it's halfway with me i think feelings do become more intense though once you have an experience yeah obviously yeah. no definitely. so like you know seeing seeing situations where my dad got pulled over got questioned got harassed for no reason then to experience my situation down in Texas. But was he being respectful? Time, Think about it. It, 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 it depends on that, too. To the T and then still get pressed up against the side of my car like I did something wrong when yeah. I did it the exact way that y'all said I had to do it. That experience right there. My, my dad's situation started it, and then my situation is what finalized it. Are Asians racist towards you? I ain't never had no Asian racist towards me. Privileged. Um, she's married to a white man. She's Asian, and I feel like that comes a lot nowadays in America. So I've, I've never experienced like nothing like that before. Trying to be the white woman of America. And all the Asians I, I've really had have have been, been very friendly people, unless they're privileged. I guess what he said. Asians that are born into American culture, um, it seems like they're just pretty much white, and they don't have any empathy for other minorities. I have had negative interactions with um, like Asian people or like other people because I'm black and because colorism is a thing, but I've also had like positive interactions. So I feel like yeah, Asia it's just a very generalized. I can't say this being being the color that I am, like my skin color. Like sometimes when I walk into the spaces, like it's not like like like, like I feel like a certain energy. It's not like um like intimidated towards them but you could tell that they 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 respect me if that makes sense i don't know if i'm explaining it right but i just that's just my interaction with other people and i ain't saying nothing to them i know it happens of course but me personally i have not experienced racism from the asian community i do <laughs> totally agree with the idea of colorism because it does seem like the darker you are the quote uglier you are in any ethnicity which does suck. I think the American influence is big. And that's on anybody that comes, no matter where you come from, what background, when you get to America and you spend a couple of years here, you start to see how things are done, whether they're right or wrong, you see how things are done, how black people are treated, how white people are treated. So a little bit after I left the military, I spent a couple of years in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and South Korea. These places were places where I was accepted more so than back home. It was shocking to me to not be followed around in stores in South Korea. It was shocking to me to not be treated or even looked at uh, the same way I would be walking down the street in certain places here. I can see that. I have dated outside my race. In my past dating history, I feel like, you know, I chased the rainbow pretty much. Like, <laughs> I dated oh, oh. East Asian man. I ain't never done that before. Hispanic no reason why it just happened. It's, it's different. You know, like, you're never going to find somebody outside of your race that's going to 100% understand you, understand your struggle, understand your family, why you do things the way that you do. When I'm dating them, I'm... I think dating outside of your race would be, like, a fun thing. Fun thing, because it's, like it's like a cultural mix-up. So if you're not dating somebody, find somebody else's race. You know, it's going to be different, and I feel that's kind of, like, why I'm entertaining the fact of you doing that. I don't think that I would necessarily date a white person i just feel like there's a disconnect but as long as like they're willing to like you know have those conversations with me and understand like my blackness i want to have those conversations with them and i don't i don't mind what their race is i think for me it's just all about my comfort level with you and how much i can relate and like he said it's a shame that people has to have a have a have a comfort level with different you know ethnicities and stuff like that because the color of your skin that's that's crazy to me Pole, just because we don't have that much to connect on, but I'm not opposed to it. 
I would just kind of rather work with something that I know there's a lot of compat compatibility there. I'm not opposed to dating outside my race, but in terms of marriage, I would love to marry a black man. I don't like how how it's how it's so much judgment and you know stuff about dating outside your race, but you know you can't you can't really have it because of the society and the system that we live in. So love all and date who you want to date. Think about our ancestors. Like, they're probably trying to in our grave. They're, they're in graves. Like, they're like, what are you doing? Like, we've done so much, and you want to be with yeah. this white person or this non-black person? I've never dated. <laughs> mm, that's not a, my race. But right, the way I, I think should, it. Because a lot of black men tend to go to non-black women. Because they can control <laughs> them. Um, y yes, they and because... Because they're easy. And because they have European features, softer mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. They Exotic. like the Kim Kardashian-looking woman. Mm -hmm. You know, you want the black woman aesthetic but you need the European features so maybe I should date outside of my race but I personally like you said I want to build with the black man I want to <coughs> have black children I, that's, that's what I want it's crazy how much this society has oh my god it's crazy how much this society has made black women black 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 people's uh, the male and female you know split up you know so much the black man said I don't need you know no black female and uh and a, and a black female said, I don't need no black male. I mean, you kind of do in a sense because, you know, you have, just like you have mother, mother sky. I mean, I'm sorry. You have father sky and mother earth. They kind of work together as a divinity to be, to become one divine of God and stuff like that. And the same thing goes for the black race. Features, softer mm -hmm. hair. Exotic. They like the king. I want to build with the black man. I want to have black children. I, th that's what I want to do. But with this generation of black men, I don't know if it's possible. Me having sex with a white man, it's just, it's the master aspect. It's mm -hmm. the buck breaking history. If you know what buck breaking is, it, mm -hmm. all of that combined. And then the idea of most times, even in heterosexual relationships, it's usually a fetish, a fetish for the individual to be with you. It's either because you have a nice body or your skin is so dark and lovely or because you have, you know, that tool that they want. Um, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, in general, it's always something on your body that they want. And if it's genuinely true love, that can happen. But for the most part, I just think interracial dating is me just think. I've felt oppressed by my own community. I actually... Oh, wow. Sometimes Everybody. I feel very uncomfortable in space. Man, just, 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 just not even, you know, just in the black community. But yeah, it's, of course, once you, because you could say elevate in life and make it in life, even in your own, and this can start to hit on you. But that also comes from uh, Caucasians, uh, Asian people, Mexican people. It's, 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 it seems like it's always your, your ethnicity to, you know, hate on you and try to bring you down. People. If you're not, not I want to say not just black, black woman, people, if you're not desirable to men, then you tend to get overlooked. I have to work my ass off for things that I want. Black men, cis hetero black men specifically, they oppress all of us. And it sucks because I want to be with a black man, but it's like I have to try to appeal to my oppressor. Um, I'm gay and I'm also black. Um, so within the black community, I feel like, again, when we go out to these protests and we go out to these clubs or parties and I'm in heterosexual spaces, I feel like, oh, it's, yeah, he's black, but like he's gay, so we can't really mess with him. Like he can't really be in our space. And it's like, how is this your space that you claim over a sexuality and a sexual preference, essentially, rather than us being the same race? Yeah, of course. Like you were saying, like if, if you're in the LGBTQ community, it's intersectionality. So. I, I, people are more cool with me if they if I'm passing and they see me as like a cis black guy versus um, if if they know I'm trans. In terms of my experience, I feel like maybe black people were gatekeeping opportunities or like trying to be super stingy or trying to be the token black person and not really, they kind of like bully other black people to make them be like, well, you don't deserve to be in my space. Like this is my zone. This is the area that I'm working in. And it's kind of like they're trying to keep other black people from being successful. Like, I feel like I've seen that a lot. It's like, like every race, though. Too. Unless they're just black people. When I was living in Mississippi, I was around predominantly black people. I didn't feel any different. But now that I'm back here in California and I'm around, you know, other races, like, well, I can see why this could be 
considered colorist or I can see how in this situation maybe I'm feeling, you know, like I'm not as worthy as these other people. But I just couldn't use the word oppressed really to describe how my experiences have went. Have you ever wished you weren't black? Never. Ever. No. Like, I want to say, record straight, I love myself now. Like, I love being a black woman. But, like, for so long, because of also family members. It's a shame that, it's a shame that, that black people, you know, we've been, like, black people have been through so much that you don't even want to be your own race. Like, that's, that's crazy, bro. Oh, you know, you're so pretty uh, because you're lighter. For so long as a child. I associated being black as being something that was a bad thing. What they say, black is beautiful. Because I saw how people that were darker than me were treated, and I was just like, oh, I, I don't want to be this anymore. But, I mean, with a lot of love and compassion and hardcore teaching, I was like, you know, being black is honestly the best thing ever. We lit. <laughs> I just feel like we're lit and I get where that comes from. That's a part of colorism. And that happens a lot in our community. And I just feel like I, it just seems like all just black people just have, have this kind of aura. Our black like more we were just we were other people like. I don't know. When it's I was weird. Younger, I moved to like a town that was like predominantly like white and Hispanic. I, I never felt like specifically like, oh I wish <laughs> I wasn't black, but I did like look at other people and say I wish I had hair like them. I wish I looked more like them. Like, yeah. I, I love being the race that I am, but having 4C hair and having darker knuckles, darker kneecaps, especially in elementary school and middle school, mm -hmm. getting through that was really hard. Now, at this age, I'm learning to accept all parts of me, but I still battle with it, like, every day. There were times where I maybe wish that I wasn't black American, that maybe I wish I was an African woman or Brazilian, because I feel like black Americans, like, we kind of mm -hmm. disconnected from our mm -hmm. African roots and our heritage, and that part kind of hurts because it's like we don't really have much to call our own besides, like, Ebonics or AAVE, but black American culture has ultimately set the tone for a lot of modern day pop culture too so i'm proud of that part as well <laughs> i would raise my kids differently than my parents raised me yeah absolutely if you haven't had an experience with man look <clears throat> just because you are raised just because your your parents are raised raised you a certain way doesn't mean you have to stay like that forever do what best fits with you and the same thing when you have children go for your children as you get older, you start to learn stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, do what best fits with you. Do what best fits you think will be best, the best fit for your children. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's good to take, you know, um, advice from your mom, your dad, your uncles, and stuff like that on on, on, how, to, on how to be. That's fine. Take it in. Uh, decipher what best works with you, but I always go with what God always go with. What best, best works, works with you, though. That's what I had to do with whether sexual abuse or some type of violence in your home, mm -hmm. you are lucky in the black community because it happens to so many of us. And I feel like with me experiencing that growing up, I would never beat my child. I don't want to have to feel like beating my child is a resource or, or a source of like them. I, I, I agree with, with him on that because you never want your child to think that somebody hitting them is okay. There's all there. There's many ways that you can discipline. So I, I, you know, condole him on that. Affected me. Yeah. I want them to know about the mental health. <laughs> yep. And take their mental health actually. Like mental health, emotions, all that. Serious in the black community at all. Totally. I love that you mentioned that specifically <laughs> about mental health because it's something you can't talk about in our community. Sometimes. And that's and and, 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 and that's something that's not that's not really, not just the black ethnicity, but just not put out in these schools and stuff like that. They don't teach you about mental health. They don't teach you about how to deal with your emotions, how to deal with your finances and stuff like that. It's kind of like if, you're, if your parents don't teach you that, you have to go out of school and, and learn it on your own. So I highly, if, if you have a child and if you can't, I highly recommend that you homeschool your child so you can teach your child about your emotions and all that kind of stuff and, and, and how, to cope with, how to cope with certain things in life. 
are you crazy? I'm going to I'm going to whoop your tail. Like mm-hmm. you shouldn't be acting this way. I give you everything. You have no reason <laughs> to be depressed. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to reciprocate that onto my children and no. I don't want them to feel it's like not that's, that's not healthy parenting. Depressed, if they're feeling overwhelmed, I don't want them to think they can't come to me and talk about it. My parents, they didn't have that opportunity to communicate with their right. parents mm-hmm. because yeah. they were raised in a completely different yeah. generation. Okay. Yeah. So now like I see my mom was you know, raising me this way because that's what she's used to. But I'm going to cut it off with my line. Our kids are probably going to be like, yeah, I ain't doing that. When I have my kids, like each generation gets wiser and they learn yeah. something else or have resources to yeah. something else. So I, I never want to hey. always highlight. You have you. You have kids, and as they get older, even younger, when they start talking, never, never shoot down anything they say because you might learn something from your kids that you did not know. So pay attention to that. The good things that my parents did, I've already acknowledged them and addressed the bad things with them, but now I can forgive and let it go and just highlight what they did do right and kind of mix that with my own. I can't be honest. Being black, like I wouldn't say that you can't be honest about who you are, but some people don't know who you are. I mean, some people don't even know, don't know who they are themselves. So it's kind of hard to be, you know, do that. I'm in a white space. That's what you know. Li- life, awesome. life is all about journey and like discovering yourself and stuff like that. So it's kind of, mm, it's just kind of hard to be honest. It's kind of hard to be honest about who you are when you don't know who you are. If that makes sense. Like, how am I coming off? Um, but a, a lot of times for me, it's like, you know, in terms of being trans also, like, how am I walking? How am I talking? How am I being received? Do these people, are they speaking at me or looking at me like they're comfortable with me? And it's just pretty tiring sometimes when I'm around other people and I'm constantly checking myself. Since we're in the age of, like, cancel culture, it's just really easy, I feel like. if you, if you Even if you want to be honest, it's like sometimes you can because you have, like, a fear of getting canceled or a fear of people, like, lashing out on you. And I feel like in certain senses like that, I'm not, I can't be completely honest in terms of, like, my views on certain things just because of, like, how people are going to react. It takes a lot for a person to be themselves and fully own their identity no matter who you are or what you are. So living in that, I've learned to never let I never let me say this. Never let this 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 system that we live in dictate who you are as a person. Never compare yourself to anybody and never try to fit in into any kind of way. Be your own person. Is me you what you see is what you get. If you got a problem, you can leave. So Hey, hey what 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 do what do you say? You either you either accept me for who I am or, or, or like me for who I, for who I'm not. I hope I said that right defend yourself all the time or don't like me are, but at the end of the day I for who I am I don't know knowing that I'm just me I like this video so if, if you guys would like to see more videos of me reacting to uh content like this then let me know in the, in the hit, let me know in the description below remember guys to stay positive love yourself do what makes you happy now before we go today's gonna be a good day